Hello, this is Corey the Keyblade Wielder, and we are back for another commentary. Non-Disney Villains Tournament Round 6. Well, now it's mostly the live-action round. Interesting start. Um, this one's special thanks to Epic Kirby for all the epicness he does. That's very sweet. So let's get this started. Uh, 20 years ago, huh? So this fight is is uh, Lord Voldemort versus Sauron. Interesting thing that it takes place in 20 years before the event of the war. Huh. I actually like this fight as between two Dark Lords. I have not seen all the Harry Potter films. I've only seen one when I, when I was like a little baby. And what I, I don't know much of... I don't remember much what History Buff was talking about Harry Potter. Something about the Korax or something. I think something he puts something in the ring which makes half Sauron, half Voldemort. Which... Oh, and Voldemort wins. Now the ring is both Sauron and Voldemort. It's something I don't know. It's been a long time since... Since he had a commentary I've seen. And next fight, um, present day, all for right now. Count Olaf versus Willard. In the description, Olaf bought the company which belonged to Willard's father, but Count Olaf humiliatedly fired him. Which got a mental breakdown, and, uh, till he meets Jim Moriarty from Sherlock, a.k.a. the live-action human version of Professor Radigan. Um, speaking of that, um, about Willard. I have not seen the movie Willard. I know of what the plot is. Like, in the movie, it was also bought by someone else, not Count Olaf, because that's a tournament. But it was some other dude who bought it, but humiliatedly fired him. He had a mental breakdown until he made friends with rats. One named Ben, and the other one, I forgot who it was. It was like a white rat. He able to control them. Sort of like the Pied Piper, but with, without the flute. It be the mind. So I guess you could say he made a good Batman villain, which I could actually see that. One thing, I'm scared of mice. I'm scared of rats. Yeah, I'm scared of any kind of rodents you could think of. And Olaf sees the rats. Yeah, I'd be freaked out too. Hold on. Yeah, it was a good editing. And, I mean, it's a good fight, though. I know that it's not a good film. But they had to kill him off. He's played by Jim Carrey. And, uh, the part where he said, tear him off. I actually like the editing with the white sleeves. It actually looks like it's Count Olaf being eaten by rats. Now that I think about it, now I'm just going to get myself nightmares. Again, I'm scared of rats. I can't stand mice. Or any kind of rodents. I mean, do you have to kill Count Olaf off? He's played by Jim Carrey. Hmm. Okay. Next fight up. Agent Smith versus the Master from Doctor Who. Description that the Master is traveling through the Matrix, the unconsciousness realm, or whatever. And fades off against Agent Smith. Kind of interesting. Are we going to see the machines from the Matrix also? They, they'd they be interesting for the fight. Well, the, basically, the Master is... Think about Doctor Who. Doctor Who represents all things good. The Master represents all things evil. Whenever the Doctor dies, he regenerates and still is a good Doctor. While the Master, whenever he dies, he regenerates... And he's still evil. Sort of like a reincarnation, in a way. Oh, now the Agent Smith turns the Master into himself, and... And the Master still gained consciousness. It's kind of... Conf 
confusing fight. It's like the person's fighting himself. But I can understand why you had to make that. And the master wins. Next fight. Norman Stansfield from Leon the Professional versus Norton, whoever that dude's name is again. Hold on. Oh, yeah, Anton Jigger. Uh, Norman Stansfield's approached by Anton, who was hired to take it down that dirty cop. Um, I've seen Leon the Professional. It's a really good film. But Norman, I just don't really like him. If you watch the movie, you'll see. I, I really do not like corrupt cops. There are cops you want to rely on. But then there are some corrupted cops. Plus, he's played by Gary Oldman, which is the only good thing. Gary Oldman's really good at playing villains, and he does. And Anton, forgot the last name, he's from No Country for Old Men. It's a very no sound tracky movie. He's like a bored dude. He's like, uh, I'm a villain, so I just do some evil stuff all the time, so I hope you don't mind. I can be so creepy. Scary. Kind of like that. And Norman Stansfield was behind him, and... Okay, I like how you blacked it out and made it look like he's actually shooting him, and... Norman Stansfield went next fight up. Beetlejuice versus Pennywise. I actually like this fight. Pretty entertaining. He was... Pennywise was gonna eat the kid, but Pennywise shows up. He's like, hey, the boss needs ya. Oh, uh, who's their boss? I'm pretty sure Penny wants to be at his own force. Either that, or are they talking about the Crimson King? If you don't know, Pennywise is an alien from outer space, and his brother's like the turtle, a space turtle, which is weird, I know, but that's an in Indian and Chinese religion, but can you, can you blame them? Okay, I don't find things silly like a space turtle with the world. I don't find it as cartoony. I find these ancient mythologies as a work of art. I call the people who make fun of mythologies the art haters, as I would call them. Yeah, Stephen King's works are mostly H.P. Lovecraft stuff. So basically, Pennywise is also Lovecraftian, and the Crimson King, basically the Lovecraftian Satan. Oh, and Beetlejuice wins. I really like that fight, actually. Next fight up. What was that dude again? Man, I'm always forgetting names, don't I? Oh yeah, Colonel William Tavington versus Lord Blackwood. While paying a visit at London's prison, Tavington receives a warning from the inmate Lord Bark is a... The villain from the Sherlock Holmes movie. One with Robert Downey Jr. as Sherlock Holmes. Not a big fan of the movie. It was decent, but it was okay. And one thing I agree with history buff is that those, yeah, they're both European, but they're not in the same timeline. Sherlock is located in the European era, like Victorian era. Tavitin is in the Civil War era where everyone looks all Amishy. Look, forest, bridge. Forest, bridge. Forest, bridge. Hold on. Yeah, they're not in the same timeline. Oh boy. Just sort of watching and. Timber! Yeesh! And. Ta the Colonel wins in next fight. Ugh, I'm very bad at knowing names, aren't I? Dorian Gray versus the Largo siblings. Uh, having recently stolen several auctions and stocks from Gene Co., Dorian Gray intends to acquire a valuable portrait only to be intercepted by the Largo siblings. I've seen the, the review of Repo the Generic Opera. That's where the Largo siblings are from. But I will admit from history, but even though it's a graphic movie, it's kind of silly to make a graphic movie a musical. 
It's like making Nightmare on Elm Street a musical. Like, hey, I'm a Freddy Krueger. I like to hunt up kids. Like, I gotta slice them up. And da 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 You know, like that. It's, yeah, imagine how silly that'd be. And I know Dorian Gray's... I haven't seen The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen yet, but I know... I think he's, like, part of the portrait or something. And one thing I would agree... If he looks in the painting, he would be going back there. Just shut your eyes, dude! Just close your eyes so that way you don't look at it! Eh, what an idiot. And the Largo siblings win. Next fight. Prince Nuada versus Lord Zed. Interesting. He wants to forge an alliance with these Power Ranger villains, which is odd. One thing I know from CK Primeval 7 is that he hates Power Rangers. Just as much as History Buff hates My Little Pony. Okay, I, I was one of those Power Ranger haters also until I looked it up. That it's from Japan. I'm like, wait, what? Apparently it was all Americanized because it was more for I mean, kids or something. Which, after I realized it was from Japan, I thought, oh my god, I've been a xenophobic the whole time. But now I went from Power Rangers hater to find it more decent. If you want to know about the Power Rangers, look up in the Japanese version. Oh, and Prince Nuada wins. Sorry for rambling. Um, Next fight, T-800 or versus... T-1000 versus Carl Rubbish Turning. Uh, in the description, Hans Landa has been secretly developing a project for interdimensional traveling only to be thwarted by a mysterious assailant. Uh, one thing I learned from History Buff when Sony Shadow was showing History Buff the list of Nazis he was using, and one of them was Omen Goth from Schindler's List. History Buff told him that he doesn't think using Omen Goth is a good idea because it's a, Schindler's List is a good movie. But it's a movie based on what happened in World War II. Almond Gold was a real person. It's not something that was made up by history. It's not something inspired by history. It's not something that's made up for history. But what actually happened? It did happen. All the people he killed and held captive were real. The main hero was real. I looked it up and it turns out it actually was based on the historical events. Some parts are, but not all of it, but it's mo most of the parts were true, while others are more fictional, but it's still a real thing. And I agree with him, you can't add Omen Gold. It would be like having John Wayne Gacy, or Joseph Stalin, or Saddam Hussein in there. It would not be appropriate. Well, Sony Channel now understand that it's actually, he was a real person. He's like, well, I what am I going to do? I mean, I already got the... List of Nazis, but if I can't use Omen Gold, why, who else am I going to use? Like, why not the guy from the Inglorious ba uh, uh, You know the word, you ba You only know where that la language goes. Like, oh, I forgot about that guy. Yeah, thanks, I should use that guy instead. So he stands as a replacement. I don't want to say that B word, B-A-S-T, you all know where it's going. But I am glad they made that choice. I'm glad History Buff warned him not to use Omen Gold. I can't believe I'm rooting for a robot that destroys all of humanity or tries to destroy all of humanity over a Nazi. I mean, the first Hellboy, it was basically a tad bit slow and a tad, tad bit dark for my taste. I like Hellboy 2 a lot more because it's more entertaining to me. More action-y. Just sort of watching. Whoa! T-1000 wins. Oh, in the epilogue. Jim Moriarty meets with Norman Stansfield. Oh boy. Yeah, I get where this is going and 
Willard at the same time lost control of the rats with his mental breakdown and Yeah, now you're gonna see where it's going. And some random dude from Aragon that was not a good movie. Slap in the face of the books recruits Gollum to find the one ring. Ah, the villain of Am I Precious? And Silvario Snape's is with Voldemort. I still have not seen all the Harry Potter films. I'm trying to remember most of History Buff's topics on Harry Potter. I guess I need to watch all the Harry Potter films to learn more of it. And at the same time, three Terminator villains team up to have machines rise up and destroy all of humanity. Good luck with that. Until Freddy Krueger, Beetlejuice, the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers, and the Jinn teamed up. At the same time, three powerful s villains, Bathmorda, Provian, and the Wicked Witch of the West, decide to team up. Even though the one ring has vanished, and, um... The next one, oh boy. Uh, the Archangel Michael, after his treachery in heaven, teams up with Lilith to recruit Lucifer. Um, boy, you really know when to press buttons, don't ya? It's like so much controversies. I mean, with all other characters that are the devils, that was the point. They were devil-like. Chernabog is not the devil. He just looked like the devil. Red is not the devil. He is a cartoonish cat devil. My point is... Um, every time we use characters that are like the devil, they're not actually the devil. This is the first time we actually use the devil that is straight up Satan. And I'm going to be honest with you. That really makes me uncomfortable. I know it sounds stupid to be made uncomfortable over something so silly as a tournament, but it does. I'm the sort of guy who can't watch paranormal activity because I'm afraid that stuff can happen in real life. I'm the person who takes exorcism films very seriously because I'm terrified of darker forces like that. So it really did let me uneasy. I'm not going to stop making commentary on this series, and I'm not going to stop watching this. Hugo! Hold on. No whining. My dog. Yeah, so it really did let me uneasy. I'm not going to stop making a commentary on this series, and I'm not going to stop watching this series. But I'm sure you guys are probably laughing at me. But it does, it really does kind of bother me in a way. Not in a big serious way, but, but just make, make it uneasy. So, yeah. Oh boy. If you're not sure what version this Lucifer is, that's basically in a human form. He was on the show called Supernatural. I haven't seen Supernatural before. I, I thought if I did watch it, I would be uncomfortable with the devil, of course. But after I got Netflix and watched Supernatural, the most weirdest part is it became one of my favorite TV shows of all time. It, seriously, I'll probably talk about more Supernatural later because i got a lot of hours in there so yeah there was non-disney villains tournament round six and uh yeah this is cory the keyblade wielder may your heart be your guiding key make sure you leave a like and subscribe